All right, welcome to Pre-Calculus, this is 3.1.3, and today we're going to be talking about solving the system. So you've solved systems quite a bit in the past, but we're going to take a look at systems that are not just linear systems, but are relatively simple for us. So um, what I want you guys to do is look at A, B, C, and D here. Now, you're not trying to actually solve these out, okay? All I want you to do is look at it and say, well, how many types of solutions could I possibly have here? Okay, so for instance, on this first one, um, I see that I have two linear two linear equations there. Um, so if I have two lines, I'm either going to have no solutions when they are parallel. I'm going to have infinitely many solutions when they are the exact same line over top of each each other, or I'm going to have one solution where they intersect. Now that's typically the most common one, but it could be any of those those three. So take a look at B, C, and D. Try and think think about what shape graph that produces, and then based off of that shape, how many possible answers could you, you, you have? Not how many do you think there are, but how many could there be? So go ahead and pause, try that, that, that for B, C, and D, and then we'll talk about these. Okay, so uh, on B, we have a sideways par parabola and a, and a normal vertical parabola there. So with those ones, if you think A about it, we could have no solutions where they kind of never touch like, like, like that. We could have one where they're just kind of tangent. We could have two where it crosses. We could have three where it touches and crosses. And, or we could have four where they can just kind of open up towards each other and kind of intersect at all four places. So I could have between zero and four intersections depending on kind of where I, I, I draw those. Um, on C, we have a cubic function, which is going to do the kind of up, down, and up again. So we're going to have that kind of wave in there. Uh, and then we have a square root. Now the square root kind of starts at one point and goes off to the uh, to one side. So we could have no solutions there. We could have one solution. We could have two solutions, or we could have three solutions. Right? It all kind of depends on where stuff is positioned. Uh, then on D, this is kind of a strange looking one. Um, so we have to play two graphs you're not used to graphing. So it's kind of well, I have x to the first power, y to the first power on the first one. So that might be kind of like a linear type type thing. We're not exactly sure. And then looking at d, well, we see an x squared, and then you have x y, and then we still have a y. Well, that x squared to be kind of gives us that kind of parabola shape. So there's going to be some kind of curves there. We're not quite sure. So that's kind of an, an example of one where we're not exactly sure. We could have zero. We could have one, two, maybe even three. So that's not one that I would expect you to like. Oh, oh, that's this shape and this shape. So how we can check these is let's go go ahead and take a look at the graphs and see what these graphs actually actually look like. So you can can get there by by going to this little link down here if you would like, or you can also kind of watch this. So looking at Desmos here. So part A, those ones actually are uh, linear. So they actually are parallel there. So that's it. That is what it is. Again, you probably wouldn't predict it to be parallel because that's not terribly common, but they did that just to kind of show, hey, here's here's one of those niche cases for you. Uh, on B, where we had that sideways and that, and that sleeping parabola, this is one of those cases where we actually have three solutions. This is it's, it's probably the most rare case where we have it be tangent over here, and then we're crossing here and here, so those are my three solutions for it. Uh, then looking at C, let me zoom back out. So there's our, our cubic going up, down, and then back up. We have our square root going through through here, and it, and it has two solutions. Again, it, it, it could have one if it, started, if it had started here, none, none started over here, here at 10. It could have had three if it started way, way over here, stuff like that. <coughs> and then part D, so here's the kind of weird, weird one we saw. So um, that first graph actually ends up being a rational function, it's just kind of written in a different way. Um, and then this other one is a type that we really haven't seen much of. It, this has a slant asymptote in it. So we actually end up seeing one, two, three intersections for that one. Right. So again, that's not one that I expected you to know at all. But this, the whole point there is, is to kind of say, well, I can use these graphs to kind of help me find what, where those cross and then what they should look like. But uh, A, B, and C, I hope that you were able to get at least somewhat of a prediction as to what those ones were going to end up looking like or what they could end up looking like. All right, so let's hop back over here. So what we're going to do now, um, oh, we actually just, just already kind of talked to A about those. Uh, oh, sorry. 
which ones of these uh, would we think that that we that we would want to solve algebraically or that we could fa fairly easily? So first one where it's two linears, you can solve those algebraically extremely easily. You've been doing that since like pre-algebra, so it's not a big deal there. Uh, B, you definitely could. Um, it's not super easy. It takes a bit of time, but it's not like it's stuff you don't know how to do. Um, and then C, again, you 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 can do it, but that one just gets really, really messy because we end up needing to square the entirety of this side here, so it's going to be a real mess, but it's doable. Uh, and then D, again, it's kind of weird, but if you isolate probably the X here, you can then substitute it in and you get only Y as an X, and it actually ends up working out decently nice for us. All right, so now let's take a look at number 38. So we're going to try and solve this system algebraically. So what I want you to do is pause it, try and solve that. There is a trick that, that makes this one a little bit easier, um, but I'll let you guys go ahead and try and see what you can do. Okay, so what you likely tried to do was you said, well, I already have this y solved for, so I'm going to take this x squared minus 14 and, I, and I'm going to plug it into the y here. That works just fine. Right? You then square that and then you get a, a x to the fourth, another x to the second term, and then, a con and then a constant term. And then you have to kind of combine your like terms and you get a really big quad quadratic with x to the fourths, x to the seconds, and constants, which you could then use a u substitution on. That'll work. But it's kind of nasty, right? So this is the hint that is really going to help us out kind of going forward and doing these more complex ones that are down below here number 39. So what I can do is I can do substitution even if it's not just a variable by itself. I can do substitution of larger kind of chunks. So if I look here on this top one, if I isolate this x to the, to the second, I get x to the second is equal to 34 minus y to this the second. So I can then take that and plug that in for x to the second down here. So that entire x to the second is gone, and now replace it with y to the second, or sorry, 34 minus y to the, to the second. Now I have an equation with only y's in it, but the benefit there is my y's are just to the second power and the first power, so I can solve that quadratic fairly easily with either factoring or the quadratic formula. So it kind of saves you from having to go to u substitutions getting bigger and bigger powers there. So what, it, what, what we want to do looking at number 39 is try and find ways that we can do that substitution maybe with things that are a bit uglier so just we don't really have to work with them nearly as much. So that's what, what we're going to do. So on number um, 38, go ahead, pause again. Try and do that same thing but solve it by substituting um, x to the second af after you've solved for it here. So go ahead and try that out. Okay, so let's take a look at what that one looks like when we do it that way. So I have x to the second plus y to the second equals 34. And then my other one is y equals x squared minus 14. So if I get this one by itself, I get x squared equals 34 minus y squared. Plugging all this into the x squared here. I get y is equal to 34 minus y squared. It's technically in parentheses, but it's not really going to matter because there's nothing being multiplied by it, minus the 14. Okay, so then I can say, well, 34 minus 14 is going to just, just be 20 minus y squared equals y. I have a quadratic, so I kind of want everything on one side, so I'll move both of these over to my left-hand side, and I'll get a positive y squared plus y minus 20 equals 0. Okay, so now that I have y, or sorry, my y kind of in that kind of standard quadratic form, I can try and factor it. So what's going to multiply to be negative 20, add to be a positive 1, well, that, that's me a positive 5 and a negative 4. So y plus 5 and y minus 4 are going to be my factors. Again, that's just the shortcut method. If you prefer to draw out the boxes, totally fine, go ahead and do that. Then I get my y is negative 5 and my y is positive 4. There's my two values of y that I can use. So now, 
I don't just stop there, I need to find the x's that, that go with those particular y's. So I'm going to take this negative 5 and I'm going to plug it in. I can plug it in anywhere, but probably the easiest place to plug it in is going to be maybe here or here. Okay. So if I do it on this top one here, I get negative 5 equals x squared minus 14. Okay. So then I'll add the 14. The negative 5 plus 14 is going to be a 9 equals x squared. So x equals plus or minus 3. Okay. And then if I do that with my negative, sorry, with my positive 4, I get 4 equals x squared minus 14. So I'm going to add over the 14 and I get 18 equals x squared. So then I square root that, and I get x equals plus or minus rad of 18. Well, rad of 18 is rad of 9 and rad of 2, which is going to be 3 rad 2. So that's just plus or minus 3 rad 2. So my, a my answers, I want to put those as, as ordered pairs here. right? So this is uh, x is 3, x is negative 3, so that's the point 3. 3, negative 5, and negative 3, negative 5. And then over here, I get um, from y being 4, uh, x is, neg is th 3 rad 2. So 3 rad 2, 4, and negative 3 rad 2, 4. So there I got 4 solutions of where those are going to be intersecting, right? All right, so let's take a look at, um, back over here, problem number 39. So what I want you to do is go, go ahead, pause, work through as many uh, of those as you can. If you get stuck, that's fine. Uh, then we're going to come back and we're going to go through, probably not all of them, but um, some of the ones that I feel are kind of the, probably the ones that are going to be uh, the biggest sticking points for us. So go ahead and pause, give those a like shot, and then come back. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these. So let's just do it. Let's do A just to kind of get one of the more simple ones out of the, the way, just kind of see what that looks like. Um, if we do A, that is just x, y equals 6, and then we have x squared plus y squared equals 15. So there's no kind of easy little trick short shortcut substitutions which we can make here, but we can say, well, if I get either um, one of these x, either this x or this y by itself, they're both about the same um, difficulty, so not a huge deal. If I do that, this becomes x is equal to 6 over y, kind of a fraction there, right? So I can plug this in for the x here, and I'm going to get 6 over y squared plus y squared equals 15. Okay. So this kind of becomes uh, 36 over y squared plus y squared equals 15. So one thing that we can do is say, well, I don't like having these weird fraction decimal type, type things. I'm going to multiply everything by y to the second power. Now, if I do that, this fraction goes away, which is my, my goal there. This becomes y to the fourth, which is kind of eh, but it helps. And then this becomes y to the second. So I'll get to a quadratic, which I'm a little bit more used to working with. Right? You can also do this with a u, sub, a, sub, a u substitution, but it's just a bit more messy if, if you do that. So let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, we get 36 plus y to the fourth equals 15y squares. And now I'm going to move that, uh, sorry, move this part over here and reorder stuff. y to the fourth minus 15y squared plus 36 equals zero. Okay. So I want to do my u sub substitution now. Again, it's just easier to do it once you're going to get it to this phase here. So I'm going to let my u equal y squared. So now when I do my u substitution, I get u squared minus 15u plus 36 equals 0. 
All right, so I need two numbers that are going to multiply to be 36, add to be a negative 15. So that's probably going to be negative 12 and negative 3. Right? So this is going to factor, I'm going to jump it up here, into uh, u minus 12 and u minus 3 equals 0. So then I get u equals 12 and u equals 3 after my u substitution there. Right? So now that I've kind of solved for u, and I don't care about u, I care a about y. Let's get it back into that y form. y squared equals 12 and y squared equals 3. So then I want to square root both, both sides here. Uh, y equals plus or minus rad 12. Rad 12 is 4 and 3, so that's 2 rad 3. So y equals plus or minus 2 rad 3. And then over here, y equals uh, plus or minus rad 3. Can't make that one look any better there. All right, so then I have basically four of these different y's here that I can use. see which ones of these are going to work for us. Um, so if we check these, because we're, we're going to have some extraneous solutions here, because we kind of added, we, we did white to the second off of this. So we're going to go back here and say, hey, do any or all of these ones work for us? So the plus or minus isn't really going to change much, because it's going to be all my y's are raised to the second power, so I don't really need to worry about checking the positive and the negative version. But if I do uh, rad 12 here, this becomes 36 over 12, right? which is going to be um, 3. And then this is going to be 36, uh, sorry, 12 to rad 12 to this, the second power is 12. So 3 plus 12 is the fifth. fifth is 15 works out fine for us. If we do the th 3 here, uh, the rad 3 to the second power becomes 3, so 36 divided by 3 is going to give us 12, plus 3 here gives us the, fifth, the 15, so those are both going to work for us there. So we're actually all good here, but it's good to still check for those extraneous solutions. All right, so now if we put all of these in and figure out what x's go with them, we can do that here fairly easily. Right? So if I do uh, 2 rad 3, uh, x equals 6 over 2 rad 3. Now that's going to reduce to 6 over 2 is going to reduce to 3 over 1. So that's 3 over rad 3. We don't like leaving rad 3's on the bottoms of fractions, so we can multiply this by rad 3 over rad 3. And that gives us 3 rad 3 over 3, and then those 3's cancel, so it's just down to a rad 3. Which seems kind of weird, but it works out. So here we get the x value is rad 3. My y value was 2 rad 3. So there's one of my points. Now, if I do that same thing with a negative, the only value which is going to change here is that it's going to be a negative on the rad 3, because nothing else is, is, is going to a, a affect the sign in front. So my next value is negative rad 3, negative 2 rad 3. That's my second solution. Again, by doing the exact same thing, but with a negative sign there. And then let's do it with the um, rad 3s. So from when my y's are rad 3, I get... Uh, x equals 6 over rad 3. Well, that's going to be 6 rad 3 over 3. The 6 and the 3 are going to reduce down to just 2. So that's just 2 rad 3. So then these two points would be when my x is 2 rad 3, I get the y of rad 3. And then if I did the same thing but just put a negative in front of all these, I get my other point as being negative 2 rad 3, negative rad 3. So there are my four solutions to that particular problem. So again, that one is a bit nastier. It looks not terribly bad, but again, 
it does give us those four solutions. And again, those U subs are going to be the most beneficial part for us. So these take a bit of time, and that's okay, right? Um, hopefully you're seeing why we like to kind of do these by graphing if we get the option, but the skill of being able to do this algebraically is going to translate to other things that we need to be able to do in the future. So that's why we're actually taking the time to do this um, by hand. All right, now let's take a look at B. So B, we have uh, 2x plus y raised to the negative 5 halves power equals 6. And then we also have 3x minus 2y raised to the negative 5 halves power equals negative 5. So the nasty bit here is that y raised to the negative 5 halves power, right? We don't like that, and I totally get, get y. So what I can say is, well, I can fairly easily isolate my y to the negative 5 halves power on this top. If I get that by itself, I can then substitute into this, and then I'm only going to have x's in, and at that, that's just x's to the first power. That's crazy easy for me to solve out. That's definitely the, the route that I want to go here. So if I do that, I would get that this is y to the negative 5 halves power equals 6 minus 2x. So I can just take 6 minus 2x and plug it into the y to raise to the negative 5, 5 halves power here, and I get 3x minus 2 times 6 minus 2x equals negative 5. Okay, at this point, this is a ridiculously easy algebra problem for me to solve out. I just take the 3x minus 12 as I distribute this through, plus 4x equals a negative 5. So 3x and 4x is going to give me a 7x minus 12 equals negative 5. And then I can add the 12 over, so 12 minus 5 is going to give me 7. So I get 7x equals 7. Well, then x is 1. Well, that makes my job very, very easy now, right? So if, if I want to solve for the y, all I, all I need to do is take this x, and I can plug it into the x here. So I get that y to the negative 5 halves power is equal to 6 minus 2 times 1 is just 2. So I can just, just leave it there. Well, 6 minus 2 is 4. So really, I get y to the negative 5 halves power equals 4, which is about as easy as I can be hoping to get out of something as nasty as y raised to the negative 5 halves power. So well, how do we deal with like this? Okay. Well, I'm going to raise both sides to the negative one power. That feels feels weird, but basically you're just taking the reciprocal of both sides. Um, so if, if I do that, I'm going to get y raised to the positive 5 halves power. It's just one gets rid of that negative, which is probably the first scary bit. And then this is equal to 4 raised to the negative 1 power, which is just going to be 1 over 4. Because again, negative powers just give us reciprocals of fractions. So at this point, I can say, well, how do I get rid of this um, 5 halves power. Well, I, I can get rid of that half power by then squaring both sides. If I square all of this and square all of this, that 2 and that 2 are going to cancel out and I'm just, just down to y to the 5th. So y to the 5th power equals 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, so that's 1 over 16. Well then, how do I get the get rid of this fifth power, I take the fifth root, right? So y equals the fifth root of 1 16th. Now again, that's not going to work out evenly and, and like pretty. That's as good as, as we're going to be able to get it. But there's my solution, right? There's my x, there's my y. My answer is 1 and then the fifth root of 16 as my point there, where those are going to be intersecting. All right, one second. All right, so uh, then on C, you should get no so solution. That, is that, that one just it just doesn't end up working, and that's just going to say hey, no solution there. Um, and then on D, we end up getting um, 
three different answers, uh, 7, 5, 7, negative 5, negative 7, 5, and negative 7, negative 5. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you F and G while, while we're here, and then, and then we're, we're going to do E together because E is probably the one that's freaking you out the most. Uh, F is going to be 2 and 3. Um, the reason why the X being negative 2 doesn't work is because that is an extraneous solution. And then on G, you should just, just get 3, 2 on that one. Okay, so uh, to take a look at E here, this one is scary. So we got square root of x squared plus 3x over 2y equals 5. And then we also have 3 times the big square root of x squared plus 3x minus 3y equals 27. So again, if you try and get just an x or just a y by itself here, this becomes really, really nasty, really, really ugly. So like I mentioned earlier, what we want to try and do is say, well, can I get a big nasty chunk by itself and then sub substitute that? I see this radical is the same thing on top and bottom here. So if I just get either this radical or this radical by itself, I can then do that substitution. I'm probably going to go for the top one by itself because it, Otherwise, when I plug in this bottom one here, I'm still going to have that big ugly fraction, which I don't really want if I don't have to have it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2y and get, well, this is equal to 10y. That's not too bad at all. So I could say my big ugly radical, x squared plus 3x, equals 5 times 2y, which is also known as 10y. So I can now replace the rad here with just 10y, and I get... 3 times 10y minus 3y equals 27, right? That is not scary at all. That is easy, right? We can do that very, very quickly here. So 3 times 10y is that's also known as 30y uh, minus 3y equals 27. Well, 30 minus 3 is often times 27, so 27y equals 27. Divide by 27 is now get y is 1. Right. So there we go. That's all of my y's stupidly easy. So now all I need to do is plug this y in here and I can solve for the x. It's not going to be super easy, but it's going to be a way easier than going the other way. So if I do that, I get that my square root of x squared plus 3x equals 10 times 1 or 10. So then, well, how do I get rid of that that square root. Well, I can square both sides. Luckily, squaring 10 is very, very easy for us. And I get x squared plus 3x equals uh, 100. So then I want to subtract over that 100. So I get x squared minus 3x, sorry, plus 3x minus 100 equals 0. And I can say, well, can I try and factor that? Can I multiply and get negative 100? Uh, adding get 3. Well, there's no numbers that are going to be multiplying to be getting 100 that are 3 apart and are nice and pretty. So I'm going to want to go with my quadratic formula here. So x is equal to negative b, so negative 3, plus or minus the big square root of b squared, which is going to be 9, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 100, all over 2a, which 2 uh, times 1 and just 2. So there we go. So over here, this becomes a 9 plus 400. So that's uh, 409. So I get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 409 over 2. And you can't reduce this at all, you can't reduce that, so that ends up being our solution there. So our two points are negative 3 plus square root of 409 over 2, 1. There's the first point. And then the other point, which comes from the same y, is negative 3 minus square root of 409 over 2, 1. So there's my two solutions. 
So those answers are relatively ugly for us, but those are by no means hard to, to get. This was probably this the scariest one, but math-wise, this was not too bad, right? The worst thing that I did was the quadratic formula, and you've been doing that since algebra one, not a huge deal, right? My answers might be kind of ugly because like, nothing there reduces, but again, this looks horrid, but if you just break it up and say, hey, here's that trick, I can isolate just that bit there and then do my big substitution, makes it kind of trivial for us to actually solve that out. Okay, so we're gonna hop back over here um, and we're gonna take a look at the notes for this section. So we talked about this kind of strategy last time, how we can take those kind of fractions in, in, inside of fractions, those complex fractions, and we can uh, uh, multiply by what is gonna get rid of those little fractions to kind of help us out. So that's the kind of strategy there. Um, so you can read through those notes if you feel like that is beneficial for you. Um, and then, like we mentioned here, some different strategies. The big one that I want you to kind of take away from this particular section is that we can do substitutions with things that are not just x and y. We can do substitutions with bigger chunks, like that y to the negative 5 halves power, like that big ugly square root, right? You can do those and it makes our jobs a whole lot easier as we kind of go go through and try these out. So with that, here is our homework for uh, 313, doing 41 through 48, and I'll talk to you guys next time.